Hi everyone, in this tutorial we will learn how to do a more advanced setup using our Smart Weathering Shader. And to show you this, I'm going to use this lubricant can from Polyhaven because this model has a PBR setup where we can apply our Smart Weathering Shader on top of it. And because it also has two types of materials, metals and plastics. So this would be the very first tip which is separating the different parts of the mold into different materials, one for the plastic ones and the other for the metals. This will give us much better control later on when we are going to add the weathering effects. After that, I joined all the different objects into a single one, just to keep it simple, and then I just added a smart weathering shader on top of the first material, which is for the metals. You can see that the instant I add the worn effect on top of it and I start playing with the bubbles effect, for example, this effect will apply to the whole model. But here is the first advanced tip. You can use a mask to determine where these effects are going to be applied. In this case, I'm going to use the metallic map from this PVR setup and I'm going to invert that map in order to plug it in into the bubbles toggle. So instead of having just a single slider, I'm going to have a map that will be masking where all the bubbles and the top corrosion will be appearing. So you can see that I can start playing with the amount parameter and it will not affect all the areas. Then I just need to connect the albedo map from the PBR setup to the warm fake border so that the bubbles have the same color as the base shader. After that, I'm just going to start playing a little bit with the parameters to get the look that I want. The rust intensity was increased, some drippings were added, and I played a little bit with the reveal extension slider to control the width of the fake border of the bubbles created. After getting the look, for the metal part that was paint, I decided to add some stains effect on top of the metal that was exposed. And to do so, I also used the same metal map from the PBR setup to mask where all the stains were will be placed. You can see that after doing that, the stains are created only on the exposed metal parts. Then, once I got the look for the worn effect, I just added a dirt effect on top of it to add a little more of weathering on it. You can see that this is just a matter of taste and of course you can get more subtle effects, but in this case I'm just using some exaggerations to showcase a little bit more what you can do. Now, after creating the look for the metal part, I jumped into the plastic variation where I only added the dirt effect on top of it. Here we can see a little bit how the mask look for the dirt and the worn effect, and some before and after from different angles. So the conclusion is that you can either use just single sliders or use some information from maps or masks to connect them into the sliders to obtain a more advanced setup. Also, it is worth to highlight that the smart weathering shader was added on top of a PVR setup. This shows that you can boost the weathering effect, adding more details on top of what you already have in a non-destructive way because you preserve your base shader setup and with lots of fine controls to get the look that you want. All of this without UVs, in a matter of seconds and inside of Blender. We hope these tips help you in your project and we really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you do so, you will be helping us a lot if you subscribe, like and spread the word. See you in the next tutorial. Saludos.